Hey guys, Paloma here and welcome to the Bates House. So today I am coming at you guys with a jackpot of a vintage game ephemera haul. So excited. I'm going to dive right in because it's going to be a long one. Get a snack, get a drink, get your crafts, get something to just kind of sit and go through these goodies with me. So excited. So I went to Goodwill yesterday and I didn't expect to go there. I actually went to a Dollar Tree that was in the area because I wanted to find some more of the clear gray bins. No luck, but I stopped into this Goodwill with really no intention or mindset of finding much, but I'm so glad that I went in. So we're gonna start off with the smaller pieces. I have games and a couple of books and this. I found this, this was in a frame, a little black modern frame. I didn't like it, it was just one that you could find like at the dollar store, but I did love the actual piece of fabric. It looks like this with this beautiful butterfly. And I know there is a specific term for this, but I'm really horrible when it comes to um, like needlepoint and all that stuff. I'm not really sure what the technical term is. So if you are sure what the technical term is, then go ahead and share that with us in the comments below so we can all learn together. I thought that was beautiful, very nicely done, really pretty lines, and I do love the colors, so I got that. Next is a children's book. This one is Jolly Jingles. It was 99 cents, and it's by Telltale Books. And I love little kids' books like this. This will be ephemera for a junk journal. Beautiful little pages. And I actually have a marketing catalog, like a little booklet that had a lot of like advertisements in it from 1930, I believe, with this little image right here. So pretty. And it says copyright 1949. I love the little barn or farm imagery. Kangaroo, look at the basket. Y'all know I'm a basket lover. The little lion, turtle, giraffe, cow, ducky or seals, kitty kitty. All the little houses. This is just so cute. And of course, you gotta love the natural age to the pages. Y'all, I have forever, look at the copper pot. I have some of those. We got crates, you got copper pan on the wall. So adorable. I love the stove, the bird and the kitty and the fish. This is absolutely adorable, beautiful for journaling. So I got that. Next we have this one here, a gift of gladness. I don't really know what he charged for this one because it doesn't have a price on it. It says all good books um 1968 and it's just a lot of poetry kind of using kindness and god so just kind of going over why it's important to be kind to people and i am actually going to read this this is so beautiful and I thought that would be great to kind of take out and piece together into junk journals as well. It's called A Gift of Kindness, or Gladness, Gladness, sorry. Alrighty, another book, Elizabeth and Andy. Look at the imagery on this. I thought this was fantastic. The house, the garage in the back, or the barn in the back, I can't tell what it is. 1959 by the Christian Science Publishing Society. Look at this. Look at these images. Oh my goodness. A daughter, a daughter walking with her father and God. The florals, the pink dress. Look at this one. The teacher is looking stunning. Love the little braids in the girl's hair, the bows, the overalls, or the suspenders on the boys. Look at the globe. A mother and her daughter. 
This is just fantastic. Look at that. Oh my goodness. This is so cute. Guys, this imagery is just beautiful. Slay. Look at him chillaxing. Oh my gosh. I want to read this too. Telling the truth makes us happy. Oh, They need to make more books like this again. Safety. Look at the stove. Oh yeah, I want to read this one. I want to read this one with the kids. How beautiful. Oh yeah, I'm gonna have to read this one first before I tear it up. Okay, and that's it for that. I don't know what the price was on this one either. <laughs> okay, so Oh, the last book item I got was this. I thought this was so cool. The red tag was 25% off, so I got this for 75 cents instead of the 99 cents. It says Jean Messer Ford, Cardinal Sports Center. And I got this for all of the paper inside, guys. Check this out. It's for baseball. So there's a bunch of these. I don't even know what these are called, but it is what it is. A bunch. And then we have a different style back here. We have this one here. And we have all of these that are supposed to be cut. I thought that was great. Let's see if we could find a date. No, I don't see a date. I don't see a date, but I loved the paper, so there's that. All right, so I'm gonna start with the smallest games and just work my way up to the big ones. Check this out. This is Play Bridge, Learn Alone, Auto Bridge, Play Yourself a Bridge Game, Become an Expert. This one was 99 cents already, love the box. Here's the two booklets on the inside, part one and part two. Now this is what sold me. Well this, for one, is really cool. It's got like these metal, let me show you. It's got all these metal pieces that go into this little grid. I don't know how to play bridge, so I don't know. But they all move. And it's so nicely put together. I feel like this would be a great piece to display in my vintage game cabinet and I'm in my vintage game space where the kids play games. That's that. But this is what sold me here. This gorgeous booklet. Look at how beautiful that is. It says Auto Bridge Advanced Course, revised by Alfred Scheinwold. It has all of the card symbols and whatnot. The top page, of course, has a little bit more age on it but I love how they have that natural yellowing kind of color. Beautiful, look at that, for a dollar. And then here we have all of the instructions. It's a lot of reading. There you go, so that was one dollar. I thought that was an awesome find. Look at this, there's so many sheets. So cool. So I got that one. Next, I got this, and this was so fascinating to me. This is so well put together. The package kind of threw me off because I'm not a big fan of this, uh, like, 70s art. I did not like that genre of design. Not at all. 
but this one was $1.99 and check this out guys the pieces are fantastic I love that each one of these strips are paper and it's kind of like a like a shiftable scrabble you make your word I guess and then you kind of get points um, with other people playing the game with you and yeah so but these are all paper so for me that is fantastic because it's ephemera and then you have these pieces here that you could actually repurpose into trays or racks or something like that to create a box form but there's that one with the purple this one with the orange this one with the reddish orange it's kind of like a tangerine color this with this mustardy yellow and then the paper bits it says Jim Rummy Gin Rummy score pad by Nakusa and look at this how many sheets are in here this is awesome fantastic I mean we pay for these things and you know paper pads and stuff to get bits and pieces of piece of authentic pieces like this or get bits and pieces of images of authentic pieces like this here's the instruction booklet and then one of my favorite things is actually the box because they always come with bits that you know prop up certain pieces and stuff like that and you could actually repurpose these into your journal covers and then we have the papers inside switch lines two and seven Daryl's jokes made Judith maybe laugh I don't know but here's all the cards for the game and they all say a different thing in his latest movie Walter plays a part of a to cure hiccups hold your blank for 30 seconds so really cute I love that we have those and then of course we can't it came with this and this is just gonna go into my vintage game space for other games love 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 and then you could tear down your box or actually use your box for storage and organization it is vintage and if you're like me and you love vintage decor stuff like this actually looks really cute in your space and you could repurpose it so that is it for that one absolutely love that it's fantastic next we have this one Goran's bridge for two this one is 99 cents and guys you're gonna love this look at how cute these cards are they are absolutely adorable with this blue color and then the cards are very standard <clears throat> we have this one with the face and then this one with the point system and they are authentic vintage cards now this one was made in oh we have this in here bridge for two by Charles Gorin it has all the game information this one is 1964 that other one the punchlines game the date on this one is 1978 so this one is 1964 we have our 1964 cards oh my gosh did I tell you all the the date on this one the date on this one is 1959 on the auto bridge and then we have the score pad and they have written in this in this already looks like they played it once that is too cool and then we have the instruction booklets this one looks like it was purchased separate in 1966 someone wanted to become a game player and these are the actual directions for this and then how cute are these these pieces actually interlock to create one long piece so these will actually go into my vintage game space as um, 
just like miscellaneous supplies if they need it. Yeah, I don't want to put it in there all the way. But if they need it, that or you could put it in your drawer for an organizer and have vintage pieces for organizing. This is just too adorable. So I was so happy about that. But there's another bridge one that is even better, which is actually the next one. So this one was 1964. Next, we have the other bridge game, which is this one. And this one is 1967. So this one is a challenging solitaire game for bridge players. This is the one that I absolutely loved. And it's funny how this one actually looks a little bit more dated than the other one. So inside we have our score pad with the bigger scoring spaces. Here we have the original box for our cards. Check that out. And then inside we have our cards. Again with the point system and the face. Y'all, I am so happy. I absolutely love the way these things were pieced together in bits. Oh, and then here, they're different colors. We have green and pink. And the pink bridge for one. So it has the symbol of the card on the back. Cute. I love the inside of the box because again, it has all of these um, vintage divider pieces, which you could totally repurpose. Here we have the instructions or the directions. Basic rules for playing contract bridge. Nice. Now, this thing is ginormous, guys. I unfolded it. If you follow me on Instagram, you've seen all of this somewhat already because I posted a ton of pictures of all of the things laid out. But how cool is this? It is huge. It's just huge. Like, that's awesome. So I would definitely keep that in the game space. That'd be like really cute to put in a big frame if you had a big room, like a big game room. That'd be awesome. Okay, so that is it for that. Y'all, I always wish I could go through one of these games and find like a million dollars. That'd be great, wouldn't it? <laughs> Check this out. Now this game piqued my fancy. I was so excited when I saw the box. I was like, this is so cool. So this is Parker Brothers from, so we'll see if we can find the date inside. Check this one out. This is such a cute setup. Look at that. Isn't that fantastic? That is just awesome. So we have the rules here. And the date on this one is 1964. And this is Rules for Parker Brothers Game of Words Probe. Here we have a score sheet. Front and back. And then on the inside we have these card slots. I guess each player gets one and you put your cards in there. And it's numbers 5, 10, 15, 15, 10, 5, 5, 10, 15, 15, 10, 5. And there are, I think, four of these. One, two, three, yeah, four. So there's four of these. And then these are just the most adorable little card stands that I think I've ever seen. And I love this kind of like neutral, almost like a pinky tone color. What I love about it the most though is that each set of cards is different on the back. So we have this one here with this teal and white. We have these 
with this like caramel peanut buttery color. We have these with this, I don't know, kind of like a brownish red. These with the teal color. Very pretty. These, oh, that's the same one, sorry. These with this olive green color. That is gorgeous. And they all sit in there so snug and beautifully. Like, I love that. That is so cute. Even if you took them out of the little storage containers, you could actually use that for pre-cut papers for your planners. Alrighty, so there is that. I absolutely love this one. 1964, again, with the box pieces. Love that look. Man, check out that adhesive. It is like this thing and nothing happened to it. Look at, this is just so beautiful and so satisfying when you put it away. Game boxes are not like that right now. They just like crumble to pieces. Everything's all over the place. So there is that. Oh, one quick non-game or book related item. I found this ribbon. It doesn't say when it was made, but it's totally vintage, you can tell. And check out this beautiful little print. It is by Afray. Christmassy music notes. Really pretty. And that was 79 cents. And it's brand new, it's never been used, as you can see. And then it has a ton of product. So I was really happy to find that for 79 cents. Okay, so this one was the most exciting and intriguing and so vintage ephemera, junk journaling, satisfying game ever possibly could be found. So this one was $1.99 and the date on this one is 1970. Guys, get ready. So this is called Masterpiece, the Art Auction Game by Parker Brothers. Look at, oh my goodness, you're gonna love this. Look at this, oh my gosh. Okay, so I was in, in my head, I was thinking, oh, I'll just probably tear up the board or something like that. But I opened it, because you can repurpose these boards because they are really thick, sturdy material. You can either use them as art in your game space room on your wall, you can use them as like tabletops. You can cut them up and use them as backing to your books. But guys, I don't, I'm not going to do anything to this one. Check this out. Can we just, this is fantastic. Amazing. So cool. I'm in love. Okay, so that's it for the board. Now let's look at the vintage pieces. I was, I amazed. The colors on this are just perfect. So here's the instructions. Gorgeous, right? Here are the game pieces. We have the dice. I guess these connect to the cards, maybe. I guess your auction card, I don't know. And then the game uh, character pieces. Look at that brown. You don't ever see that brown anymore. We have green, blue, red, white. And they've kind of substituted in modern games the brown with the yellow, huh? Oh, this is just so gorgeous. Okay, so here's the art pieces. The art pieces are fantastic. Not only is the imagery amazing, but so is the backs to each one. Okay. 
So here we have art pieces and we have the character pieces. Here's the art pieces. Look at that. Ugh. So it's just famous imagery art. All different styles different artists guys look at this can we just look at the basket it's a baby bassinet basket oh how cute look at this guys Oh, I want to be that kind of mom. Look at this. These are just amazing. Amazing. All right, so now that we saw the artwork, take a look at the backs. How cool is that? So it gives you the information to the artwork on the back. The date information, everything. Check that out. So fantastic. Okay, so I'm just like in awe. Like I can just sit here and just look at it all and touch it. I can, it's so distracting. Okay, so there is that one. And these are the character pieces. Count Francois de Bonnet. And then Distribution of Masterpiece Value Cards. So I guess everybody gets these cards. Each character gets them. Baron. Yeah, don't try to get me to read that. He's a Baron. Millicent Friendly, a librarian. Oh, okay. So... It explains who they are. One of the most popular figures on the continent, crafty, cunning, charming, and beyond, oh, charming beyond belief. During the Nazi occupation, the Count worked with French groups posing as an enemy collaborator when the Louvre was sacked. Still some question as to whether the Germans stole genuines or for forgeries. Made headlines in 1951 when he purchased an unknown original Rembrandt for 34 francs. Then we have the Baron. No dossier prior to World War II available. Amassed fortune through steel, munitions, shipping. Shrewd businessman. Once signed a multi-million dollar contract in disappearing ink. Wow. Extremely canny mind. Capable of great intelligence. Fantastic feats of memory. A regular at Monaco, Las Vegas, private London clubs. Wow. Okay. Then we have... B. Elton Whitehall, Esquire, I believe, once London's top criminal lawyer, defended mob indicted in three million pound train robbery. All were freed. The barrister, the barrister retired to his Swiss retreat immediately thereafter. Cautious, conservative, yet smilingly feared in high cultured circles. Currently maintains fabulous estates in Switzerland, Majorca, and northernmost Finland. He drives an orange Bentley. How cool is that? Roxy Big D Warrenson, Dallas, Texas, USA. Widow of Bull Warrenson, who, when ramming for a for sale sign into his unobtainable land, inadvertently discovered Warren's great underground oil ocean. Bull was gushed to death and a fortune fell to Roxy. Wow. Her checkered theatrical background and apparent so what attitude are considered definite advantages during a high tension bidding. That's funny. <laughs> True Texan, so what? Roxy has been the 11th best dressed woman in every year's poll reflecting her impeccable taste. Funny. And then we have Melissa Friendly or Millicent Friendly, 
Spinster librarian from Central City won a free trip to Omaha in 1947 where she was first exposed to great art, later inherited a modest sum from a secret admirer, and parlayed into several millions through cautious, skilled investment in art. Seemingly shy and unassuming, but reputed to have a mean temper. How cool is that? Okay, so moving on, we have the Masterpiece Art Auction Game auction cards and they have a bunch of money amounts on the backs and then you have some that say forgery or something like that let's try to find that one look at the color on these awesome that says forgery and then we have a lot of money amounts and the colors on these are just fantastic now check this out the money though is amazing and it's made with this thick craft paper like it's really nice quality so we have this brown craft paper color so cool that makes for awesome ephemera and then we have this one here I don't even know how to explain this color it's like an I don't know, like a orangey brown, almost like a leather color. Very nice. And then we have this gorgeous olivey green. Fantastic. Oh, when I saw the pieces in this game, I about fell. I thought it was so gorgeous. So many different pieces, so many like important art pieces. It was just, this was just fantastic. And I was so torn as to whether or not to keep it as a game or definitely use it for the ephemera. Uh, I think I'm still torn. So it might stay together for a while until I just like can't contain myself and dive into it. When I make this journal though, I am definitely going to be using this inside piece and the box and whatever I got to use because this is stunning. <gasps> oh my goodness, I just got an idea. Oh my gosh, have you ever had a moment where your thoughts just kind of align and you see the entire image? I just got that. Oh my gosh. And I think I'm going to use this one as the example so this is definitely going to become a junk journal but it's also going to become so much more oh I'm so excited Ooh, this is so gorgeous anyway for two bucks I mean but like really though this too is so amazing so that is it for that I feel like I'm like closing a time capsule or something <laughs> How amazing were all of these pieces, guys. I am just so in love with everything. So excited to add it all to my vintage game piece ephemera. It is super gorgeous. Just absolutely in love. I do hope that you guys enjoyed this haul video. If you did, go ahead and give it a big thumbs up. Let me know what your favorite or let me know what your favorite game was or what game you found the most intriguing. What pieces did you absolutely love? And please don't be mad at me because I know I watch some hauls sometimes and I'm just like, oh, I'm so jealous and I'm hating. Not even gonna lie, I'm hating. But then, of course, you know, you love the person that you're watching, so you can't just be too mad. Either way, this is a fantastic haul on a budget. So excited. Like, this is just amazing. If you know anybody that watches videos like this or is kind of getting into the junk journal community or is into different things like this that are crafty and vintage, go ahead and share this video with them because you guys help our community grow. If you're new to the channel, welcome. If you just happen to stop on in by chance and you haven't subscribed yet, go ahead and do that before you head out and turn on the notification bell of new videos whenever I post. I do so many different things on this channel, it's unreal. You can check out my playlist to kind of get your fix of different things such as thrift store hauls, junk journal videos, planner videos, mashups of planners and junk journals. I do happy planner stuff, dollar store shopping. I just do a little bit of everything. Whatever my heart desires to put out there with you guys, that's what I do. You can follow me on my social medias on my Instagram and my Facebook group at The Bates House. 
for sneak peeks of things like this whenever I share it with you guys. And for now, that is it for this one, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!